and gentlemen, and welcome to the 35th Annual SEMA Awards. We're pleased to return to our usual spot on the calendar in celebration of Canadian Multiculturalism Day. But before we meet tonight's winners, to launch our festivities, please welcome the Step Crew. Ladies and gentlemen, your hosts for the evening, please welcome Lucy Zilio and Francis D'Souza.
Good evening, everyone. I'm Lucy Zilio from Omni Television. And I'm Francis D'Souza from City. And we will be your hosts for this 35th annual awards gala of the Canadian Ethnic Media Association, or SEMA for short. Francis D'Souza. Yes. I have seen you for years. It's very nice to work with you. I see you all the time. I saw you in Rome, Italy, covering the new pope. Oh, yes. And boy, when they came out and said the new pope was Pope Francis. Yes, it was just meant to be, I think, don't you and think? And you were there. Yeah. Wow, that's great. It was great. And I'm a huge fan of yours, too. Watch you all the time. Yeah, Used yeah, to yeah. stay up late to watch you, too. <laughs> yes, Letterman, yes, all yes. right. Yeah. So this is the night we honor and celebrate some of the year's finest creative work ever to be read, heard, seen, or felt by more than 700 print television and documentary voices serving the multicultural and multilingual communities of Canada. And what a rafter ringing opening from oh. our first musical guest of the yes. evening. I think we should tap our toes while we applaud, don't you think? I'm just glad they don't live above me. <laughs> no kidding. Practicing their music. They hail yeah. from the Ottawa Valley, the Maritimes, New York, and New Zealand. They call themselves the Step Crew, a whirlwind of fiddle and dance that mixes in their old country roots with a contemporary spin. You know what? Very much like the lives we live now. And guess what? They're going to come back a little later on in the show. There are five major awards to be won tonight in print, radio, and TV, plus three more for outstanding achievement in other areas of our uniquely diversified lives. And we are so excited that many recipients of these awards and their guests have come from faraway places to be with us tonight. That includes Timmins, that includes Red Deer, and along with today's winners this evening, we are also taking the time to celebrate National Aboriginal Day. So happy Aboriginal Day. <laughs> we also welcome distinguished members of our federal and provincial governments, MP Andrew Cash, representing Davenport. MPP Laura Albanese from York Southwestern and Deepika Demerla, MPP for Mississauga East in Cooksville. All right. Now to start things off, we would like you to meet the president of SEMA, whose long and honored history in communications, film, and diversity has won him the respect and admiration of all who have worked with him. He's made documentaries, served on an Olympic bid committee, launched new language television programs, and just last year was the recipient of the Queen's Golden Jubilee Award. So please help me welcome Kumar's Resvanafar. Thank you. Honored and distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. On behalf of the Canadian Ethnic Media Association Board of Directors and members, indeed, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 35th Annual Canadian Ethnic Media Association Award Gala. And I sincerely thank you for joining us tonight <clears throat> to recognize and celebrate the excellence in ethnic media in Canada. <clears throat> I would like to Congratulate the winners of this year's awards for their great achievement, achievements, accomplishments, and contribution to the ethnic media. We are proud of all of you. The selection of tonight's award recipients could not be possible without the dedication and the diligent work of our hardworking jury members, who I, at this point I would like to recognize. Ms. Brenda Najwan, the chair of a Strategic Alliance of Broadcasters for Aboriginal Reflection. <clears throat> Ms. Julie Payne, manager of the Canadian Journalists for the Freedom of Expression. <clears throat> and my dear friend and the past president of the Canadian, uh, Canadian uh, past president of the Canadian Ethnic Media Association, Mr. Dat Noyan. <clears throat> Thank you dearly for your hard work. I also have to add that I'm extremely happy that tonight's event coincides with the National Aboriginal Day, which makes this gathering more meaningful than ever. So happy Aboriginal Day to all. With that, I wish everyone a great night, and I hope you enjoy yourself. Thank you. At this point, I would like to invite Mr. Ted Opitz, Member of Parliament for Edupico Center. Thank you very much, Q. Madam Chair, Madeline Zinyak, 
Honored uh, colleagues from Parliament of both levels, provincial and federal, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for allowing me to, to share this evening with you again. Uh, I've been out to SEMA many times, and it's such an important organization within the, the diverse uh, um, population of Canada because it does some great work. Madeline and her dad before her, uh, who started this association, has, uh, has contributed a great deal to the diversity of Canada, and I'm very proud to be able to share this evening again with you. And on behalf of the, the Right Honourable Stephen Harper, Prime Minister of Canada, and our government, uh, we're, uh, we're very proud to be part of this occasion. And I do have some greetings from Jason Kenney. And he says, he would like to be here tonight, by the way, but he's, uh, he's stuck in Calgary, and unfortunately there's a lot of flooding out there, as we know, and, uh, and he hasn't been able to make it uh, to Toronto. But he says, I am pleased to extend my warmest greetings to all of those attending the 35th Annual Canadian Ethnic Media Awards hosted by the Canadian Ethnic Media Association, or SEMA. Founded in 1978 and formerly known as the Canadian Ethnic Journalists and Writers Club, SEMA is an independently run organization dedicated to supporting professionals working in the fields of writing and journalism. Each year they host an awards gala honoring a number of outstanding individuals in the categories of television, documentary, radio, innovation and lifetime achievement. Recognition and support from organizations like SEMA is essential to helping the work of Canadian writers and journalists of various ethnicities succeed in our country. SEMA's efforts to ensure that Canadian press remains free of ethnocentric bias and their work to preserve journalistic freedom make for a much stronger Canada. I commend the Canadian Ethnic Media Association for your efforts to support ethnic journalists and writers in Canada and I offer my congratulations to all of the evening's award recipients. Best wishes for a successful event. Sincerely, the Honourable Jason Kenney. Thank you so much. We'll meet our first radio winner for 2013 coming up after the break. At this point, I would like to invite Ms. Olivia Cho, Member of Parliament for Trinity Espadina. What a momentous day. It's the first day of summer. It's also the longest day of the year. It's also a very important anniversary. The Canadian Ethnic Media Awards are 35 years old today. Isn't that exciting? 35 years. That is how long we have been able to celebrate the contribution of the ethnic media to our communities and to our countries with these awards. That contribution has been amazing, and I am so proud to be able to be here with all of you. You have made a big difference in my life, first as an immigrant and then as an elected representative. I was just 13 when my family came from Hong Kong, and my father could speak English, but not my mother. So with the Chinese media here in Toronto, we were able to get an understanding of this strange new world. And we were able to find out about other Chinese Canadians in the community. It helps us connect and it still does. That is so important to our family and to so many others. I see many old friends here. I've worked with many of you, first as a trustee and a city councillor, now as a member of parliament. You have helped me communicate with so many communities. And even more important, you have helped Canada become stronger through our diversity. Love your mission statement, and I share it. The Canadian Ethnic Media Association upholds the principles of Canadian citizenship and multiculturalism and the right of freedom of expression without ethnocentric biases. You do that every day in helping to reach people from whom English is a second language, in helping to reach new Canadians and immigrants and refugees, in helping to bring people together, in helping to raise pride in our diverse cultural heritage, in helping to bring important stories to light, stories that might have been missed by the mainstream media, and you provide jobs. And that talent from all these journalists is just extraordinary. Tonight, with these awards, 
we pay honor to that talent and to the dedication and to the commitment. So I congratulate to all the award winners, not just them, because everyone has a reason to celebrate. Thanks to the ethnic media, all Canadians are winners. Our entire country is a winner, and I thank you all very, very much. I, I now have the more, most important part, a very important winner, Camilla Reimers, Reimers, was born in Chile and started writing from the moment she opened her first book. Even as a child, she understood the power of words. Now she's an award-winning novelist and storyteller, tellers of tales for Spanish-speaking families and for others who want to learn. Camilla has captured the imaginings of books and given them new life over the radio that she once found in books. It is a great honor for me to present to you this amazing storyteller. But before we call her on stage, here's a taste of her wonderful radio piece. <laughs> Camila Reimers' dream was simple, to help children and parents share in the learning of the Spanish language and engage their imaginations through music, riddles and stories from more than 20 Spanish-speaking countries. And here's a glimpse into one such story where she's in conversation with one of her students. Pero Rayito, tú sabes, es importante cuando tú estás en la radio que vayas aprendiendo a pronunciar, porque no es Bush. Bush es el presidente de los Estados Unidos. Es mi amigo también. Sí, pero... Ay, venía, ay, Bush. <risa> es mejor que digas Bush. A okay. ver si puedes repetir. Sí. Bush. 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 No, oh, Rayito. Bush. No. Applause. Congratulations. Good evening. Thank you very much. This is a great honor, and I am humbled by this award, which recognizes the great work of Chin Radio and all the wonderful volunteers that assist me each Sunday. When not working as a radio host or a writer, I teach Spanish in my day job. So today, as a special one-time offer, <laughs> I will briefly put on my instructor hat and provide a quick lesson in Espanol, which you can then use to impress your friends at your next cocktail party. <laughs> the name of the radio program that I host is La Onda Infantil. In Spanish, the word onda means different things. It can refer to a wave in the water or a radio wave. The name of my show can therefore be translated as the children's radio wave. However, in a more colloquial sense, onda expresses an idea similar to the English slang term vibe. So if someone tells you that you are a person with buena onda, they are complimenting you by saying that you are a cool person with good vibes. For instance, this evening is filled with people with super buena onda. <laughs> Returning to the show, La Onda Infantil, can also be translated as the children's vibe with a sense of hip or funky kids. End of my Spanish lesson for today. Before stepping down, however, I would once again like to thank Sima for giving me this honor. It truly is a privilege to be here. 
I would also like to thank Him Radio and Francis, uh, Francesco Di Candi in Ottawa, as well as all the people who assist me with this program. Thank you, Jaime Marulanda, for giving me the opportunity to be on there. As well, gracias to all vol the volunteers who helped me each week, Francis, the talented RJ, the genius behind the wonderful uh, voice of Rajipito, and Jacqueline. Gracias. The 2013 SEMA Award for Print, right after this short break. At this point, I would like to, I'm pleased to read the greeting message from the leader of the Liberal Party of Canada, Mr. Justin Trudeau. Dear friends, it's with great pleasure that I congratulate all of the winners to the 35th Annual Canadian Ethnic Media Association Award at the Velma Rogers Graham Theatre. Canada is blessed with being one of the most diverse and multicultural countries in the world. And having events prestigious as this evening's only help to further display our openness and welcoming nature to the entire world. The Canadian Ethnic Media Association works to support and recognize achievements in the ethnic media industry. With a nation as varied in cultures as Canada, it is of the utmost importance that all Canadians are able to feel engaged and knowledgeable about their local community, their national community, and their communities back home. For 35 years, the Canadian Ethnic Media Association has ensured that all Canadians have had this possibility. A second congratulation must be sent to them as well as for all of their efforts on this front. Unfortunately, a prior commitment keeps me away this year. However, with warmest wishes, I welcome everyone to what is sure to be a fantastic award show. Sincerely, Justin P. Trudeau. Thank you. <clears throat> At this point, I also would like to invite Ms. Indira Nadus Harris, Director of Communication at the Office of the Honorable Michael Kutu, Minister of Citizenship and Immigration of Ontario. Good evening, everyone. I uh, want to start out by telling you how thrilled I am to be here today. You know, I look out across this room and I see so many familiar faces. So many faces that I know on a daily basis go out there and work really hard to be the voice, the voice of those communities out there that need to be heard. For 35 years, the Canadian Media Association of, of Canada has been delivering the hearts, the hopes, the dreams, the desires of newcomers. You are that lifeline. You give voice to what people out there would like to say to the rest of Canada. And you ensure, you ensure that our democracy is strong. You are the foundation that gives life to our multiculturalism. So I want to thank you for your hard work, and I want to tell you how pleased I am to be here today, because I know your work comes from passion, hard work, dedication, and love. So thank you. Now, before I continue, I actually have two sets of greetings here to read this evening. The first is from the Premier of Ontario, Kathleen Wynne. On behalf of the Government of Ontario, I am delighted to extend warm greetings to everyone attending the 35th Canadian Ethnic Media Association Awards of Journalistic Excellence. Tonight is an opportunity to recognize and celebrate the vital role that our multicultural media plays in building a diverse and collaborative society. People of Ontario come from all parts of the world and have connections with every part of the global community. Our multicultural media helps members of our ethnocultural communities stay informed and engaged. 
so they can participate meaningfully in the life of our province. To the journalists being recognized here tonight, I offer my heartfelt congratulations and sincere thanks. The stories you tell are important because they enrich our public conversations with diverse voices and global perspectives. Please accept my best wishes for an enjoyable evening and much future success. Kathleen Wynne, Premier of Ontario. The next set of greetings is from, the, from Ontario's Minister of Citizenship and Immigration, the Honorable Michael Coteau. It is my pleasure to extend warm greetings to everyone attending the 35th Annual Canadian Ethnic Media Awards. Hosted by the Canadian Ethnic Media Association, tonight's event is a wonderful way to honor the outstanding contributions by journalists of multicultural media. Your work inspires and helps Ontario's immigrants successfully integrate into our province. I commend you on your exceptional work and dedication. We are fortunate in Ontario to live in a multicultural society. Our diversity is our strength. Ontario's many diverse communities contribute to our province socially, culturally, and economically. Congratulations to all of tonight's award winners. Please accept my best wishes for a successful and memorable event. Sincerely, the Honorable Michael Coteau, Minister. Thank you very much. Our second award of excellence is in the category of print. And immediately our minds go back to our beginnings when the term ethnic media meant only words on paper. You know, with the first ethnic uh, newspaper uh, of the 1700s in Halifax to the 1880s Ontario editor who was born a slave. In 1916, the language papers of the Canadian West were more plentiful than anywhere else in the world. And when the waves of migration rolled in with the 60s, the multicultural flood of newsprint served and connected a tapestry of homelands to our own and a lively hungry for hunger for stories of belonging came of age. Yeah, and to present the SEMA Award for print, we'd once again like to call upon the Honorable MP for Etobicoke Centre, Ten Opens. Thank you once again. I have the distinct pleasure of, of presenting the print award to a wonderful young lady from Red Deer, and we've had an opportunity to chat a little bit this evening about her experiences, and you're going to find out a little bit more about that. And this year's jury selected her for the best print story, and her name is Alexandra Scaltetti. And she's a reporter for Multilingual Weekly called The Diversity Reporter, and her wonderfully personal story of a family's long history that she never knew she had. And before we call her on stage, let's take a quick look at some of that work. Getting to know Grandma evokes Alex's earliest memories of what it meant to be Hungarian. It was in her blood all along, but she never saw how it related until she had written it down for her and for all of us. Although she has rebuilt life in Canada, the experiences of Hungary are still boxed up inside. Now when I think back to her overloaded closet, I realize the struggle is not with shelves and shelves of cookies and pastas. It cannot be fixed simply by reorganizing. They are boxes of stale emotions. The fear, anger, and loss are still carried around. Those years will always be a part of her. Um, first off, I'd like to thank SEMA um, for the opportunity to be here. It's absolutely um, a privilege. It's very incredible. And um, obviously the diversity port reporter um, for allowing me to publish, you know, these stories and these experiences that that I thought a lot about and were able to uh, put down on paper. And um, receiving this award for the article, though, really made me think about three things, I guess, that were brought together, and that was family, history, 
and storytelling. And um, I really thought a lot, thought more about storytelling now that I've received this award. Um, I think it's so important because, you know, you, I've met a lot of my Hungarian family. I've heard their stories and, and listened to them. But it's, it's also writing those experiences down and sharing them. And I think um, storytelling has a very powerful ability to bring people with, you know, diverse cultural backgrounds together. And I think uh, that's really what I've learned from this. So uh, thanks again to Seema and the Diversity Reporter for this opportunity. Your second radio winner for this year's SEMA Award on the other side of this break. And now we have a second radio award to present. When radio was born, it was called the medium of the mind because the listeners' own vivid imaginations filled in the pictures, which were sometimes far more vivid than the storytellers ever dreamed. Yes, like on that long ago Halloween Eve in 1939. Remember, Lucy? When <laughs> 1939? That, that was in the script. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When people truly believed that the war Who of the... Who hired him? <laughs> Who hired him? Okay, that the war of the world was raging. Remember, remember? Yeah. You read about it when yeah, you were in school. I, I was there, The Martians Francis. were right on the doorsteps. Today's alien would be green with envy. <laughs> I used I'm, to like you. I'm red with blush. Aliens were, they would be green with envy to discover that much of our own best radio is no longer distant and scary, but close and intimate. It's a medium in which a single compelling voice can hold us riveted. We can still see the pictures in our mind's eye. Mm -hmm. And there is a wonderful storyteller in sound we would like to honor tonight. So here to present this is the Fairness Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Jean Augustine. Congratulations on your 35th anniversary. It's an honor and a pleasure to present to you this evening Micah Burke. Micah broadcasts at over Chin Radio in Ottawa, where she's a host and producer of a weekly German language show that helps her listeners rediscover their cultural pride. And this year, Osima Jury singled out one particular interviewing experience that uncovered Canada's debt to forgotten writers of other languages. So let's take a sneak peek at Micah's piece before we call her on stage. <laughs> world through the lens of distant long ago lives and places is the heart of these unique radio moments with a trio of early German Canadian poets who shed a whole new light on what multiculturalism was like 200 years ago. Here's an excerpt from Micah's interview with Professor Dr. M. Hartmut Freshle from the University of Toronto. Das ist also jetzt dein Wirken, dass genau, die zusammen das genau. erscheinen. Das sind lauter Individuen, Einzelne. Das ist keine Literaturszene. Da gab es keinen Dialog. Gibt es auch heute nicht. Es hätte ausnahmsweise sein können früher, weil jetzt... Und den Dialog gab es eben dann durchs Jahrbuch, ne? Please join me in welcoming Maike to receive this award. Thank you very much. So, happy National Aboriginal Day, Canada. I'd like to begin by saying that I'm humbled. It is an honor to serve and strengthen the diverse voices that make up Canada as well as play a part in cultivating learning, communication, and exchange around the idea of Canadian multiculturalism. When I think back to my days in the school classroom under Trudeau, I remember being envious of my classmates that did not only belong to Canada as I did as a sixth generation Canadian. So many of my classmates also belong to other places and times. I was envious of their cultural capital 
and the ties and links they possessed to far off and distant places. I became fascinated by languages, culture, and geopolitical activities, eventually pursuing a PhD at the University of Leipzig in Germany and focusing my research on German-Canadian inscriptions on the Canadian literary landscape. These voices are complex and often challenge our ideas of Canada and the world. Some of the most fascinating recent stories to us come from Suzette Meyer, Verena Stefan, Elisabeth Mann-Borghese, Angelika Arendt, Ulrich Schaffer, Kurt Hüttely, and Fritz Grashof, as well as so many others. And over the centuries, German-Canadian voices have contributed to this body of literature, three of whom were discussed by Professor Dr. Hartmut Frischle and myself in this winning submission. And what I want to address today here at the SEMA Awards on National Aboriginal Day and encourage is a fresh look at the relationship between immigrants and aboriginals now and over the past few centuries. I want to, take, I want to thank the, C the Canadian Ethnic Media Association for this honor and for being a catalyst for media excellence in Canada and around the world. I would also like to thank everyone at Chin Radio, in particular, Mr. Lenny Lombardi, Ms. Teresa Lombardi, and Francesco Di Candia for being so wonderfully Italian and embracing the very un-Toronto market of Ottawa Gatineau. A special thank you to Omni TV for making this evening so memorable. And in conclusion, I want to thank my family and all of the people who are part of my life Please know that I love and appreciate you. Thank you. Congratulations, Mika. Yes, well done. Congratulations. Good to see you, Jean Augustine, <laughs> in your beautiful Caribbean blue. No, now, it's beautiful. It, and, and, and Olivia Chow's looking really awesome in blue, too. Uh, is okay. blue the color? Blue's the color. Is blue the color? Someone should have told purple. us. Purple. Well, we were told purple. <laughs> so Anyway, if you love Bollywood movies, you will love this next act. Yes, this dance company is choreographed and danced on projects in the Bollywood film and music industry. They specialize in Bhangra. Anyone like Bhangra? How about classical Indian? How about some Bollywood? Yes. They were a finalist on Canada's Got Talent. Mm -hmm. They are a Noshani, Rahim, and Chase Constantino, better known as Broken Dance. Tera, tu patta tera, 
दुपट्टा तेरा दुपट्टा तेरा दुपट्टा तेरा नारंगदा Award for the best in television after this break. Our next category, speaking of, is television mm -hmm. news, a uniquely stress filled but hugely satisfying art. It's a get it right the first time skill where seconds takes are rare. Oh. Okay, hang on. Let me do that again. Back it up. Back you're, it up. Take two. You've got Bollywood in your head. I do. It's a get it right the first time skill where second takes are rare. Got it there. Uh, I got it. And you might not even know what you've got until you play it back. But when you're in the heat of it, you certainly know you've got something. Like your own Gemini winning report from the G20, mm -hmm. kettled by police <laughs> Francis D'Souza and wondering when the rubber bullets might hit. Yes. That looks really fun. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but now I can laugh about it. Or on even your nightly show, Tuned In, where interviews, you know, you're always wondering... Have I asked all the five W's? I try. You do? I try. But by far the most valuable instinct of the TV news person is spotting a story in the first place by simply seeing what others might have missed. Which is exactly what our next winner did. And here to give you all the who, what, when, where, and why got them all. <laughs> is the president and CEO of the Ontario Media Development Agency, Karen Thornstone. Well, good evening, everyone. It's an absolute honour to be here tonight on behalf of the Ontario Media Development Corporation as we celebrate excellence in media. OMDC is delighted to be a partner in this important awards event again this year. It's a celebration that aligns perfectly with all of our values and priorities. OMDC's role is to stimulate job creation and investment in the cultural media industries here in Ontario, book and magazine publishing, music, interactive digital media, and of course, film and television. And we do that through a variety of programs, funds, tax credits, and by providing support for festivals and markets and events just like this one. You know, Toronto is often called the most multicultural city in the world. And it's this diversity that's made our city, our province, and our country so incredibly dynamic. And it's thrived largely because of the work of organizations such as the Canadian Ethnic Media Association and all of their members. Because of you, we've got a remarkable variety of high quality media outlets and information sources. And the talent that we're recognizing here tonight helped to keep our communities informed, entertained, engaged, while staying connected to their culture and heritage. 
So I want to congratulate all of tonight's nominees and also Madeline and Q and the SEMA Board of Directors. Thank you all for your efforts. You deserve our recognition and our support. And now, of course, it is my privilege to present the winner in the television news category, Zi Yang, for her engaging feature looking at Lu Li's experience as a Chinese-Canadian soldier in Afghanistan. Born and raised in China and immigrating to Canada in 2000, the word researcher often crops up in the academic and professional resumes of Ji Lang. So when the opportunity came to spot a story with a unique cultural twist that no one else seemed to see, she was ready. But before we congratulate her and invite her on the stage, let's take a look at her story. Ready in three, two, one, and up. For over five years, Ji Yang has been working tirelessly to tell stories from the Mandarin community in Alberta and Toronto. This particular piece tells the story of the only Chinese face that emerged among our troops in Afghanistan. He returned last August and here's a glimpse into Lu Li's life. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Ji Lang to the stage. Good evening. Thanks a lot for the kind introduction. I'm deeply honored and humbled to have been selected for this award, and I would like to express my sincere appreciation to SEMA and the jury panel. Also, many thanks to Omni TV, where I have worked as a news reporter for the past five years. It provides me such a good platform to cover some unique topics and make different news stories just as a loose story, which shows you strong belongings to Canada and their positive attitude to pursue their dreams beyond ethnic boundaries. I think this is really a reflection of Canada as a multicultural country. Talking about myself, I actually came to Canada as an immigrant 13 years ago from China. I was very fortunate of having opportunities working at uh, ethnic medias in Vancouver, Calgary, and Toronto. Although I was a TV news reporter in China as well, the jobs here actually have taught me and changed me to produce stories from a different angle and perspectives. I saw ethnic medias were expanding with increased number of immigrants coming and heard what an important role our programs could play for newcomers as well as community members. These are reasons and the motivations for me to keep enthusiasm every day at work. As many of us may know, traditional media, including ethnic media, nowadays is facing many challenges, but I believe it is just a transition period and could be prosperous again with the effort of each, each of us by collaborations, reformations, and in, with innovations. Because many people still need us, need us to keep a voice in this society and this country. At last, I want to also thank you, my producer Jenny Hu, and uh, all the my team members at the uh, Mandarin program at uh, Omni TV. Thank you, they showed up to support me. <laughs> Thank you.
Congratulations, G. Thank you, Karen. Almost to the month, 60 years ago, Mount Everest was conquered. And the most famous quote from among the mountaineers who had tried and failed was their answer to one reporter's question. Why do you want to do it? <laughs> and they said, because it is there. Ask a writer, ask a storyteller, any storyteller, especially a documentary one, why do you want to do it? And chances are the answer will come bold, fast, and it'll sound something like this. Because it isn't there. What wasn't there when our next award winner began his climb was a controversial Canadian story untouched by anyone else until he planted his own special touch on its telling. Yes, and it is this year's jury choice for best television documentary, Never Came Back. And here to do the honours is Julie Payne from the Canadian Journalist for Free Expression. Hello, it's an honor to be here. It's always an honor to work with Canadian Ethnic Media Association and also to work with Brenda and Dat on the jury, who were wonderful. Um, when writer-producer Carl Nirenberg and co-director Malcolm Hamilton set out to depict Canada's Roma as a proud, historic people with a rich and lively culture and not as the so-called gypsies many had imagined, they were called wide-eyed and naive. But they forged ahead with the truth, and their, document, their documentary is one more important contribution to the telling of Canada's untold stories. Before we call Carl Nirenberg on stage, let's look at uh, a short piece from his documentary. Ready in three, two, one, and up. Carl Nirenberg's documentary titled Never Come Back has a strong message. Behind it is a never-before-told story that holds nothing back. Shedding new light on a people still scorned as gypsies, it highlights the fears, hopes and lives of the Roma community in Canada. Claudia walks the 15 city blocks to Alexander Muir Gladstone Avenue Public School and hangs out in the schoolyard with friends until the school bell rings. Here is don't have... Uh... Are you gypsy? You are not my friend. And this. Do people in your school know you're a Roma? Yeah. What do they think about that? Nothing. They are my friends. Please welcome Carl. Thank you very much. And why did they show that piece? Claudia Banya is here with us tonight. Claudia Banya is sitting here with her mother, Natasha Banya, with her father, Tamash Banya, and with my, with my dear and good friend, Tibor Lukash, who helped us so much, the manager, coach, and founder of the FC Hamilton Bohemian soccer team. And my, my partner in crime, uh, Malcolm Hamilton, is sitting with them. And uh, I'm also very very blessed that my lovely and beautiful wife, uh, Martha Plain, and uh, M uh, Malcolm's wife, Pamela, who had to put up with so much, so much of this project that happened in Malcolm's studio in his house as we worked on it. And as we worked on it, you know, it's, we weren't, uh, it was a labor definitely of love, not for money. I do want to thank, very much thank Paratosh Mehta at Omni TV for fostering the project and, and for tolerating our changes and our twists and turns as we developed the story. Jack Jedwab in Montreal was the author of the idea and pushed it, and we do have to thank him. I do want to say the talk to these good people when you get a chance after the people here. These are not bogus refugees. These are not people who came here seeking to abuse our system. These are not people who were part of some international criminal conspiracy. Some politicians have to recognize that their words have impact and meaning, and that there's a continuum that starts with the most extreme and vile hate that goes to subtle stereotyping of people. And you know, some broadcasters even have been, uh, even have faced potential hate crime charges for deciding to gang up. God knows why, when we started doing this program, it made no sense to me that with all the progress we've made in notions of human rights, that the Roma people should still be subject to the most vile hate, hatred, and bigotry that you can imagine. And it opened our eyes. I could not believe it when we traveled to the countries of Central and Eastern Europe that we should import any of it into this country 
is to our eternal shame. Instead, we should thank ourselves and congratulate ourselves that at least for a while, if not for now, in Canada, the Roma people found the multicultural haven that exists nowhere else in the world. Perhaps it is no longer that for those people, but maybe one day, one day again, it will be. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carl. Very passionate. Viva yes. the Roma people. Yes. Strength to the Roma people. Thank you, Carl. And what a, that was such a moving clip. I have to say, that was very moving. Remember our opening act? I do. Well, they are back. Uh -huh. When introducing acts like the Step Crew, it boggles the mind to see how many individual talents can be crammed into one energy-loaded performance. OK, take a guy like John. OK, there's John. So, so listen to this, because this is impressive. John has won the Canadian Open Step Dancing Championship three times and fiddles while he does it. Yes. Or his wife, Cara, beautiful. Who's beautiful, beautiful wife. Gorgeous, oh, she's gorgeous, beautiful. Gorgeous. Cara, she's beautiful. Yes. <laughs> she is a world-class winner of six Grammys with the Chieftains mm. and choreographer of movies for Brad Pitt. He's and just Cher. okay, and she's just okay. <laughs> yeah. the, then add the amazing backup hymns of Pat and Mike and Christine, who are equally gorgeous. <laughs> And, and you've got what dancing was always meant to be, which is? Fun. Yes. Here, ladies and gentlemen, Step Crew. Oh.
Stay tuned, lots more coming up, including this year's winner for innovation.